Santa's Book of Names by David McHale. Edward was good at numbers. He could count all the way to 50. He could recite the alphabet, and he knew the names of most of the dinosaurs. But when he opened a book and tried to read it, he just couldn't. Edward's teacher was concerned. She sent a note to Edward's mother and father, urging that he be tested to find out what the problem was. No tests, Edward's mother wrote back. Patience. At bedtime on Christmas Eve, Edward's father read aloud Edward's favorite Christmas story. In the story, Santa Claus delivers presents to boys and girls all around the world. How does Santa Claus remember the names of all the boys and girls to give, he gives presents to? Edward asked his, asked his father, he had finished. And, and where they live and what toys to bring them? Well, he must have a good memory, said Edward's father. Or maybe he has them all written down in a book, said Edward's mother as she came in to say goodnight. That would be a good idea. After his mother and father kissed him and turned off the light, Edward took out his flashlight from under his pillow and he tried to read the story himself. He wanted more than anything to be able to read and he almost could, almost, but not quite. Just as he turned the last page, Edward heard a noise. He sat up and listened. Yes, there it was again. Edward slid out of bed and tiptoed downstairs peeked into the living room, he saw that his stocking was filled and that there were presents under the tree. Santa had come and gone and Edward had missed him. Then he would notice something else, something lying on the floor right in front of the fireplace. It was a book. He bent down and picked it up. The book was thick and heavy and probably very old, for the cover was worn and the pages were all tattered. Santa must have dropped it. Oh my goodness, he suddenly realized that. He ran to the front door and he threw it open and he stepped outside. Just as he did, a long shadow passed over him and glided across the fresh moonlit snow. Santa, wait, cried Edward. You forgot your book. But in the jingle of the sleigh bells and the rush of the wind, Santa didn't hear. And in an instant, he was gone. How far could Santa get without his book, Edward wondered. And when Santa realized the book was missing, how would he know where to find it? Then Edward had an idea. He hurried back into the house, quickly put on his boots, mittens, coat, and hat. He drew it, and he knew what letter the word book started with. So he tromped out a huge letter B in the snow. Would Santa see it? And even if he did, would he know what it meant? Then Edward heard the sound of sleigh bells growing closer. He looked up. High overhead, Santa's sleigh appeared. It circled once, and it went into a steep dive, gliding to a stop right beside Edward. Hello, Edward. I see you found my book, said Santa, who looked very much like the Santa in Edward's storybook except that his nose wasn't round, it was pointed. That book contains the names of address and addresses of all the children in the world, Santa explained. Most of them I know by heart, but I can't always remember which presents to leave. That's why I need my book. Edward held the book out to Santa. Thank you, Edward, said Santa, and he gently patted Edward's shoulder. It would be a great help if you would come along and read it to me when I forget something. Ride with Santa in his sleigh, Edward couldn't believe his ears. He, st he stared down at the listening so I, I can't help you, Santa, he stammered. I can't read. Come along anyway, and you can hold the book open. So the pages don't blow, said Santa. I promise I'll have you back before dawn. Edward smiled. 
Okay, he said, and he jumped into the sleigh beside Santa, who bundled him up in thick woolen, robe, wooden, woolen robes and placed the open book in his lap. Then Santa gave a low whistle, which I can't do, and the reindeer lunged forward, lifting the sleigh into the crisp, clear air. From rooftop to rooftop they went, and at each stop Santa would disappear down the chimney with a small bag full of toys. Presently, they came to a great city. Skyscrapers, dark and silent, loomed around and above them as Santa made his way from one apartment house to the next. A million children must live in this city, thought Edward, and Santa delivers toys to every one of them. How he did it, Edward couldn't say. Does time slow down, he wondered, or even stop on Christmas Eve while Santa is about his work? On they went to other cities and to every town and village in between. I'll go wherever there's a child, Santa said. All this time, Edward had been holding the book and turning the pages so that Santa, his glasses balanced on the end of his nose, could glance over and read what was written beside each name. He read aloud, Pablo Lopez, paint set, and Lucy Wells, baseball bat, as Edward followed along. Crossing the vast ocean, skimming above the waves, when a huge seabird flew in front of them. As they went past the bird, the tip of its wing brushed Santa's glasses and sent them spinning. Down, down the glasses fell until, with a faint splash, they entered the dark sea and disappeared. Uh oh, could be a problem. Oh dear, Santa exclaimed. Now I really need your help, Edward. Do you think you can read the words to me? Edward knew Santa was counting on him. I'll try, he said. Good, said Santa. I was up to the seventh name on that page, Ben Hill. Edward counted down the page to number seven. Beside the name was a word that looked familiar to him. Buh, buh, Edward began. That's right, Santa said. Just sound it out. Bo bo book, said Edwin. Book! A book it is then, declared Santa, as he landed the sleigh and stepped out. What's next, Edward? Santa asked upon his return. Edward looked up at Santa. Da, da, doll, he said proudly. After that, Edward continued to read the words to Santa, and while Santa was delivering one present, Edward was getting another one ready to go, and he was figuring out those words. He was persevering. Finally, they finished. Edward closed the book of names and placed it on the seat beside him. As Santa emerged from the last chimney and took one final present from his bag, it was a book. Merry Christmas, said Santa as he handed the book to Edward. Thank you for all your help. I couldn't have done it without you. Then he took up the reins once more, and in an instant they were streaking through the dawning sky. Edward opened his book to the first page and stared down at the words. He must have fallen asleep on the way home, because the next thing he knew, his mother was gently shaking him and softly calling his name. Merry Christmas, Edward, she whispered. Time to wake up and see what Santa Claus brought you. Edward opened his eyes. He was lying on the sofa in front of the fireplace. Look at what Santa left you, said Edward's father as he bent down to pick up and picked up a book. Would you like me to read it to you? Edward smiled. No thanks, Dad, he replied. Let me read it to you. And he did. That's the end. Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas!